Well, hello everybody. Uh, it's Peter Glow coming back to you again with Apprentice Bird Carvers. And I've got my project out. And right now, we've got a basically in front of us is a piece of lumber that roughly resembles a bird. Um, but that's not, that's a long way from where I want it to be. So uh, it's time for me to take some of this, these hard edges out of there and put some roundness on this poor thing. We've, we've basically sheared off the corners and we've kind of, we haven't lost any bird, but there's still a lot of wood in there. We got to free this little guy. So I know I just picked any spot that looked particularly square and I decided to start bringing it in. As I go along and I'm looking at my own work, this is about learning. It's not just about uh, what other people can learn, it's what I'm learning. And what I'm learning here is probably was a little too cautious, picked the wrong tool. I should have picked something with a little more aggressive uh, bite to it. And I would have probably got through this project a lot faster than I was, but it's my first bird in a while. I was carving for a while before my daughter was born and I was coming along pretty good, but then everything went upside down as it will when you have children. And I got out of it for a while and I have to get my hand back in. And I got to learn. I've got to do better. So this is me documenting my journey to recapture something I, I, I lost. I hope my hand still remembers how to do this stuff. And uh, I've forgotten some things and I have to remind myself. So I was, I was decidedly cautious. I'm actually a little further along in this and I'm looking at my bird now compared to what it looked like then. And uh, I was overly cautious. There was a lot of wood in there still had to come off. But that's the thing, you see, if you're following along and you're carving the same bird I am, yeah, it isn't necessarily about carving a masterpiece right off the bat or perfection. It'd be nice if it was perfect. But I find this very relaxing. I mean... Even watching myself working again on what I did, it's a very relaxing pastime. Just it's a good time to think about other things that are driving me crazy, like bills and my job. And you don't get angry when you're doing with the bird. At least I don't. I I think about every, all those same things that would ordinarily make me angry, but I think about them in a different way. It's a different perspective. Something about holding the wood in my hand and feeling the sawdust just changes how you think. If you notice, I've got a, a nice dust extractor running up there. Um, you should have something to protect you when you're doing something like this. You don't want that wood in your lungs. For the longest time, I carved with a mask on my face. That's okay, too. You can get those masks for very little money, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just remember to blow off the ash a little bit every now and again. Mind you, it was murder on my glasses. The dust extractor is a bit noisy though, so I've kind of had to mute the sound a bit. There's also a nice sound of the of the wood tool grinding away, chewing up that wood. It's important to remember that birds aren't square. They're kind of egg-shaped all around. You notice that belly is starting to look a little bit like an egg now? I'm undercutting the wings. Make sure I don't lose those. That vertical line you see going through the body by my thumb is a beautiful frame of reference to make sure I'm doing everything right. See how I cover up the head? The head's turned just a little bit and it can throw your, your eye off. It changes your perspective, especially because it isn't turned very much. So it's important to cover the head so you can get an objective view of what the body's looking like because that head pointing a different way will distort your eye and you carve the body to look even. It looks even when you're looking at the head, but you realize you're actually twisting it 
a bit. That the neck, the head turns on a neck. It's independent of the body. The body isn't necessarily turning with it. The body's still straight. So you need to cover that head up so you keep the body straight. You have one side roughly the way you want it. There's no great trick to it then. You just hold it up, look at it on the axis and say, does it look the same on both sides? And if, if something looks wrong, step away from the bird. Just stop. Don't try to force a fit because sometimes what you're doing is making it worse. It's important to just walk away and I set the bird somewhere where I can keep my eye on it. I walk past it every day. I might be doing laundry or something and I look down and I suddenly, just out of the blue because I'm not really thinking about it, I'm not trying to force something, that's when it comes to me and I realize where I was going wrong, where, what I was missing. And when I fix what I'm missing, suddenly all the other distortions or other issues suddenly become clear and I know exactly what to do. This is a take your time kind of a project. I could have taken the wood off a little faster, but uh, on the other hand, I was I was reminding my hands how they work, and I was reminding my eyes what to look for. I'm looking for roundness. Roundness in the chest, roundness on the body, and roundness across the front of the chest, too. I don't want to take so much off it. That roundness is gone there. Well, that's looking a lot better already. I can't believe I was bringing that in so slowly, but then the tail was so wide, so it was distorting my view, and I, the butt was still too big. In retrospect, I probably should have brought that tail in a little bit first, but something about rounding the body just makes everything right, but I kept the tail too wide. I mean, keeping a note of the things I do wrong, the tail was wide, so it distorted my eye, and I kept the back too wide because of it. One little thing like that can throw everything else off. So I'm going along very carefully and very detailed. But the fact of the matter is that it's still too wide. Trying a different perspective here. I haven't quite figured out which perspective I like the best. But uh, here's a side view. Now that we've done the belly, let's go to work and kind of round that back down a bit. He's a bit of a quarterback. All muscles and shoulders. Not the delicate creature the little chickadee should be. And I'm afraid I keep way too much wood on those shoulders and neck. That's really still my, my biggest Achilles heel is finding the neck. It's really hard to find how far that neck goes down on the diagrams. And the pictures kind of hint at it. And, it was, and I, I can't recommend enough the value of looking at pictures. It was the pictures that told me that, what gave me the best hints of where that net shoulder and neck should be.
Now that little RAM power tool I'm using, fantastic tool, but not really designed for removing a lot of wood. It's important to remember, it took me a while to learn this, that I thought a bird's wings were curved, but a bird's wing is very straight. Which is kind of a strange thing to get your head around when you're doing three dimensions because it's just a straight wing, but it's on a curved back and a curved body. So you have to kind of bring it down because if you notice, it's kind of flat on his back on the top but it's also very flat on its side. So it, it actually tends to, to twist, but the edge of the wing is still flat. So I, I'm keeping this in mind as I'm compromising, slowly bringing it down to find that place. Now, of course, it was much lower than that because I kept way too much shoulders and neck. And that kept the wings too high, which really distorted my view. Lessons learned. The top view of the diagram shows where the cape of the bird, it looks like a little, I don't know, Batman cape. It's kind of this, this covering on the top of, a sh of its back that isn't wing. It's, the wings don't go all the way up to the back of the neck. There's this little cape there. In retrospect, I should have measured that cape more carefully, made sure to cut down some of the wood because the, the wings actually come up underneath the cape. You can see it in the picture behind the, the, the cutting tool there. There's a little cape and the wings are underneath it. So I kept that whole thing, the wings were up way too high. I should have brought them way down before I did this rounding job. And I would have, if the tail was the right width and the cape was in the right spot, I would have had a much better time of this. I'm going very detailed and carefully here, but in actual fact, all that wood's got to go. I'm mostly rounding, but I can tell you right now, I was feeling lost. I knew there was something. I, uh, more that had to come from somewhere and I wasn't sure. And it was the tail and the, and the cape that was causing me the distortion. I kind of kept them wide because I thought I could come to them later, but in retrospect, 
should do the tail and the cape first. Being a little frustrated with the back, I went back to the belly. At least I know there's not a lot of features like capes and tails to mess up the belly, so you can get right in there. And the person who cuts the blank on the, on the machine is going to do an orthographic view. So you're going to get the full side view and the bottom view of the, of the bird, but underneath the wings, there's not, they're not going to cut that. You have to remember to cut some of that wood away. There's something there, that little bump under the bird's bum. It's called the undertail coverts. That's that soft little fluffy spot right underneath the tail. You gotta preserve that. And the turf the tail curves a little bit underneath there too. It's kind of like a little arrow shape. You can see it there. I drew the hint of the width of the of the tail. still too wide though that was like a safety line i knew that it was actually narrower even than that that was a mistake i should have gone in right to where it should have been there's not much to distort the tail so it would have been an easy benchmark that's important with things like the heads moving then the eyes move and other parts wing one wing could be up one wing could be down it's sometimes difficult to find a frame of reference to measure from and say that's it because um, if his if his wings are in any way different and it's okay if in fact it's really good if they're asymmetrical a little bit they have to be the same length and width but they can be in different positions or if the head is turned it's difficult to find that frame of reference but the tip of the tail is always a good one to work from and I really should have said you know this you know made a mental note that's my frame of reference. And it does mess me up on this bird later on because I accidentally used the eyes too many times and I got the wings at the wrong spots. Forgetting that one, when the heads turn, one eye's forward and one eye's back a bit. And that it may be just forward a little bit and it may be just back a little bit. But when you add the two up, it's quite a bit of distortion. And it came out on the body and I had to fix that later. But the, but the tip of the tail is a good frame of reference and I should have measured it first. But I got excited to get right in there and start carving the body. Still, even with the mistake, the roundness is, is starting to come out now a bit. I'm trying to deal with those wingtips. It's just not working. So let's try another tack. Someone once told me, a wise carver, that uh, you'll have a whole tray of, tra of bits, and you can see I have a whole bunch of bits there, but you always end up going to the same ones over and over. It's a small ball cutter. It's good for cutting small channels, little grooves in the bird. There are places where you're going to need those little grooves. They're going to serve as markers. It's okay. There's still plenty of wood. You know the tail is somewhere underneath the wings, so if I use a ball cutter, I can roughly mark where the wing tips are. And I've used that mark even now. This was actually a good idea because, again, the wingtips were a good frame of reference. They were just too wide, but lengthwise they were right. It's kind of like driving. You've got a map, but if you don't know where you are, you can get lost. The tip of the wings is a good reference point. Everybody can get a little lost sometimes. I definitely got lost on his back there a few times.
That's my tear shape ruby uh, a little fatter than a tear shape. My ruby cutter. When I first got into carving, I couldn't believe that we were using diamond cutting heads and ruby cutting heads. It seems so bizarre, and yet that's what we use. And I know it sounds like, well, that must cost a fortune. It really doesn't. But they make such a difference. My ruby carvers are very precious to me. They're my favorite, even more than the diamond. I'm back to the blue cuts all. Back to carving more wood off. I'm not ready for the detail. The rubies are great for detail. The diamonds are good for detail. But when you want to get in there, you want that cuts all to just remove the wood. I think I finally figured out. Ha ha, the lights come on. The tail is just too <laughs> wide and it's distorting the wings. I can't put fold the wings over a tail that's a mile wide. It's going to cause some distortion on those wings. So that body's got to come in a bit. And even doing this, it's scary because I'm chewing off all those wings and it's just really a scary moment. It's always a f scary even today to, to take wood off like that. But if it's wrong, it's got to go and you have to have faith that it's going to be all right when you do. If you choose to get into this hobby, it's one of the single most relaxing and rewarding hobbies I can think of. If you love birds in any way, try it. And if you're thinking to yourself, I, I, I have no art, artistic inclinations, I can't even draw. Well, I'll tell you something. I can't draw anything on two dimensions on a piece of paper to save my life. I'm no artist on paper. That's a fact. But for some reason, I can think in three dimensions. For the beginnings, it's just following a blueprint. But later on, it becomes, well, what is this bird doing? What is it thinking? Why is it doing what it's doing? And as you start to work through the posing and things, then it becomes more and more art. The beginning stages, it's always, always about anatomy. And there's no getting around it. If you mess up the anatomy, the rest of it kind of gets a little bit weird. And if you're thinking, well, I'm not an ornithologist. I don't know about birds. I may have said this before, but don't let it stop you. I mean, I, I'm really no expert either. I, 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 of course, seen all I, I can, the credentials I bring to the table is I've seen birds my whole life. I may not know what's right when I'm carving, like, I'm getting lost on the tails, etc. And I'm admitting it that I'm, I'm wandering in, in the wilderness here trying to figure out what to remove as I'm trying to remember how this works. But I may not know what's right or if what I'm doing is right and I'm doubting myself, but I do know when it's wrong. That's why I keep stopping and going, wait, don't go too far on this tail. Something is still not right. If I go back in time, I would say measure the wings, the tail width properly, dum dum. And then get that cape on there and, and bring the wings down. They're way too high and way too wide. I'm trying to fit something very high and very wide onto the back of this bird. So it still looks like a flat piece of lumber on top. But doubt is good. Doubt is fine. I doubted myself, so I didn't do too much, and I kept walking away from this. I go off and have a think. One of the things I did wrong, though, is I thought the tail was just a little too long. And I shortened it ever so little, and I wish I hadn't. 
I fixed it, but it threw off all my other measurements. That tail was such an important uh, focus point. I still know the wings are too wide, but I just can't put my finger on why. look on the sides though even though it's curving I'm still keeping them straight if you notice no matter how that bird curves I'm keeping those wings as straight as I can it's a round bird but you couldn't quite you can it's not quite putting a ruler on it but those are pretty straight wings I'm not allowing it to bow outward or bend inward so if you're a little doubtful sneak up on it like I am One of the best assets I have when I'm doing this job is the capacity to doubt, admit what I've done was wrong, and look at it and go, well, that was a bit of a, a foolish thing to do. And then that's how I learn from it and I get better. That head has just turned just a little bit and it caused me no end of trouble with these wings. I let the eye position fool me. There are some carvers who carve their bird with the head dead straight all the time. And then when they have it just right, they actually take a saw, uh, like a straight uh, string file. And they cut the bird's head off and then they turn it. Because again, the body doesn't turn. Like the shoulders, etc., don't turn when the head can, looks around. Um, so you can just cut it off and turn it a little bit. I'm stubborn. It's not my preferred way. I would rather that the carve it the way I want it to go. But uh, it did play havoc with my head there. See, I'm already rounding the wings, but they're still not the right width. That's just me kind of sketching I'm not quite sure what's wrong I know something's not right I just can't quite get my head around I thought if I curve the wings down a bit I could bring those wing tips in because they still look too fat back there I forgot that I carved the safe there was a safety width it wasn't the actual width of the tail it's too wide still even curving them so I could you know keep the line straight coming up the wings it wasn't enough I don't want to bring too much off the chest, even though it's very flat and it shouldn't be that flat, but it's still very round. 
going anywhere near the face was probably a little too soon. I checked myself there. Cover that head up. See what the body looks like without the head, and it's a—it's like a whole other object. It changes completely. I learned that tip from a man who taught me to carve. His name was Al Forler. It was in Kitchener, Waterloo. I don't know if he still carves, but. That man taught me so much. I owe him a great deal. Gonna take some of that squareness off his head. Nice and easy. When you have a straight on looking bird cut and you try to turn it a little bit, you're gonna carve it still straight on, but when you look at it head on, like without the body, but you look straight down the face, straight up the beak in the middle, it will look corkscrewed. It will look too high on one side and too low on the other. That's because you've mapped a turned head bird on a, on a straight head body, on a straight head bird, and uh, it causes a sort of a distortion. And I'm going really slowly here, and this, I am supposed to go slowly. This was the right thing, to take that distortion, that corkscrewing off. In the back, it'll look too high on the one side, and on the front, it'll look too high on the opposite side. There's a trick for that, which I can show people how to do if they want to know. Remove that corkscrewing effect. Measured straight down the top of the head and got the width roughly right. This is the first step of me actually trying to find some shoulders, but I didn't cut down far enough. That was my problem.
Because of these courageous cuts on this side, the side of the head will become my more favorite side of the head because it's more right. Later on, I'll choose the other side as the head is my favorite because it'll seem more right. Oh well. I love how chubby he is right now, but this wasn't supposed to be a chubby chickadee. That's where I went a little wrong, too. Tried to keep too much of the fluffiness. But this was a... Fluffy chickadees are the winter ones, so they're all fluffed out to stay warm. At least a little bit of anatomy, you have to know a little bit. They fluff out their feathers to trap heat by keeping uh, air spaces. But in the summer, their bodies go flatter and more, more lean. to keep the heat out. I've marked the eye line in a rough cheek. There's a little cheek on the birds. From behind the eye, it curls around underneath the jaws and up to the beak. Up to the back of the beak. Don't carve that off. If you look down the top view of a diagram, if it's a good diagram, you'll see the cheek there and the top of the head there. The top of the head is smaller than that cheek. When I'm carving up, reducing the head, I first do the whole head to the size of the cheek. And then I go back above the eye and I do the top of the head after that. Little did I know I left the shoulders too far forward and there's still too much head there. Too much cheek. I'm checking my work. So I drew uh, where the head will be using crosshairs. I had to bring that wood down. It's another one of those scary times. When you're doing the face, the beak, the eyes, that's where the personality is. That'll be the difference between a bird that looks like it's been stuffed and mounted and a living bird that looks like it's doing something in its personality. It's okay to take your time on the head. I could have been a little more aggressive with the... If I used a different cutting head, I probably should have used a different cutting head. I got a little cautious. A little cautious is okay. I could have been a little less cautious. with my caution and even though I left too much wood on there I'm starting to see a little bird face start appear out of this lumber we're slowly transitioning from a block of wood into what looks like a bird and if you're starting out and even if this is as far as you get I mean I'm pretty good about beating myself up I think everybody is they look at their own work and they see something you know they see what's wrong everybody will do that if you're looking at your own work and you're thinking, eh, it's just not good enough, it's wrong. 
it's important to take a step, take a step back once in a while and go, but you know what? It actually looks like a bird and you made this with your two hands and it came out of a block of wood. So give yourself a break and say, hey, I'm doing something that most people couldn't do. If you get your bird to the stage, if you're learning this craft, be proud of what you're accomplishing. Just keep taking the squareness off. Find some roundness, that egg-shaped body. The wings are straight, but they still curve over the body. Find those curves. Find the roundness. The top of the head is still a bit square for me, but isn't he starting to come in a little bit underneath the chin now? Isn't that starting to become something nice? That's the secret to this kind of craft. Just make it round. If you start off with a piece of wood cut in an orthographical view, it means it's side view, top view. Find the roundness. Keep measuring. Make sure you don't take off something you shouldn't. But if you find some roundness, then you look at it again and go, well, there's more roundness. Take that, you know, just more squareness. Let's take that down. Still a bit squared. Let's take that down. Just keep taking the square parts off. Everything looks a little too blocky. And you are, if you can do that, then you are a bird carver. There's all kinds of classes of bird carver. From novice, beginner, intermediate, masters, there's grandmasters. I've been doing this for a while. I'm still in the novice group. That's okay. There are some beginners that come along and blow me away, and that's okay, too. It doesn't stop me from entering competitions, and I enter not to get the ribbons, although sometimes I do, and I've won some stuff, too, but that's not why you do it. I, I do it because I have to put my work out there so that I find a judge or a master, and I say, what did I do wrong, or what would you? what do you think I should have done? And they give me those tips, and those tips are so valuable. If you want to learn, you sometimes you have to put your work out there for other people to look at and say, that's pretty good. You didn't do bad, but you missed an opportunity here. And you're like, ah. Uh, don't try to absorb too much. Just take one or two. Don't be discouraged. I get discouraged. I was discouraged by this little guy a few times. I put him down and went, ah, he's wrong. But don't give up. Because there's so much that's right, too. Actually, this is at the state of the bird where I'm actually at my happiest. A little block of wood. It still looks like a piece of wood and a bird at the same time. This is the most relaxing part for me. You can tell because I'm just kind of riffing away. Thinking about other things. Having a mellow. Bad day at work. Your child's not behaving very well and your wife is cranky because you forgot something. They're in bed now. I'm going to go downstairs and take some wood off a bird. I'll screw up the bird maybe, but the bird will forgive me pretty fast. And I have some crazy glue and other pieces of wood. I can fix it. <laughs> Well, we're coming to the end of my session where I'm riffing this bird. Um, 
I'll eventually figure out the tail's too wide, and I'll go back around for number two and I start doing some refining on this bird. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you want to learn more, there's come to our website, www.apprenticebirdcarver.com, or .ca, sorry, it's .ca, and uh, see what we're doing over there. I'd be happy to have you come around. We put up some stuff, and I posted my idea for future projects, at least a little bit, and I'm going to document a little bit more about what I'm doing and why. So I hope you've enjoyed. If you're curious about bird carving, come around, and if you want to, send me a, a clip, uh, send me a like, tell me what you think about this, leave some comments. I'd be happy to hear from you. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and uh, don't be afraid to carve, pick up a bird, pick up some wood, and bring some nature home your way. Thanks. And